Well, ground and pound is a true art form. And whether you're talking about Khabib Nurmagomedov, Jack Hermanson, or this guy, they've all taken it to the next level over the last several years. Yes, it's unbelievable to watch him take control and find opportunities to land ground strikes. Now, what they do so well is he does not waste punches. He usually will find one good shot and take it. He does not try to just go punch, 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 punch for the sake of punching. He finds position, he finds posture, he brings his hands inside, and then he comes over the top with elbows, or he lands these big right hands that makes his opponents fold up, and then he goes to the next position, whether it be submission or continuing to ground and pound his opponent into the bottom of the ox. And of course, it all starts with maintaining top position, which he does as well as anyone in the game. Well, always exciting when this guy shows up on the fight card, Daniel. He is a true mixed martial artist. Not really any glaring weaknesses, at least, that he's put on film thus far. He's the new breed of fighter. Those kids that start doing everything at six years old. They start wrestling. They start doing jiu-jitsu. They start to box. He's one of those guys that has every one of those skills, and he does them all at an A-plus level. He's got tremendous cardio. He is the type of fighter that in a few years will just litter the UFC roster across the board. And oftentimes his opponents will say. You ready? Are you ready? All right, so the fight is now underway. On one side, we have a fighter who does everything well, taking on a true Grappler on the other side. Going to be interesting to see how long he can keep it up with. Right I mean, Damian Maya may be the most specialist type of grappler in the UFC. This guy resembles him in a number of ways. Let's see how he manages this fight against a guy that can do just about everything inside the octagon. I mean, can you imagine having a reach advantage like this? What a luxury! It's a luxury. I've never had one over the course of my entire career. But fighting guys that are taller, you struggle whenever they are very aware of such a massive advantage. This guy is going to try and use this tonight. Nice punch lands over the top. Archer, there's the early takedown. Pretty evident, DC, that he wants to get this fight to the ground, and he was certainly able to do so there. He felt like he had a massive advantage in the wrestling. And if he attempted takedowns, he would secure him. Let's see what he does from this position. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Oh, nice check on the leg kick offering there. Well, straight right hand has been a good weapon for him. He misses with it there. Big punch lands through the middle. He throws the right hand there. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. All right, so he lands another jab now, just snapping that thing off, DC. I believe that the jab was lost in mixed martial arts initially. But now it has been found, and it's been found by this young man in this octagon tonight. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Blocks that strike. Great action to get to that takedown. Joy gets back up again. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Nice punch by Choi. And both guys really throwing with authority. Oh, misses with the jab. And he landed the right hand there. Oh, significant strike attempt there, but a huge block. Oh, and there he goes again, working off that beautiful jab. He continues to keep his opponent at distance. I mean, keeps him at bay with that beautiful, precise jab. It is like a piston. It goes in and out, and before his opponent can even realize what hit him, he's already hitting him with another one. Right. I love, love watching this man fight because of that beautiful, educated jab. Don't wait, don't wait. I need to... Oh! Huge right hand! Dude's hurt. Oh! Stay in this 
fight! Oh, nice land there with the punch. You see, he's taking advantage of what is an obvious edge in reach. Strong kick to the outside of that lead leg for him there. You do not want to eat too many of those. No, you can't. He does not wind up on that kick, but he somehow is managing to take him down, cut him, take him down, cut him. Over and over, he secured these takedowns. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Changes his stance. You'll see a lot of this from this fighter. That was a nice strike. Oh, collar tie. Both fighters hanging down in the pocket and both landing. Connects with a right. Horn sounds for the end of round one. All right, now we check out some of the action from that previous round, DC. How about the display of striking? Just high level. I mean, you would think that we're watching a K-1 level kickboxing match opposed to being in the UFC. Both displayed great technical skills, Unbelievable strike. Okay, you ready? Round two. Ready? Let's go, fight. Oh, nice strike landed there by the Korean Super Bowl. That is a stiff jab. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. All right, so he's landed some good shots. You hate to be over the critical, but nothing really in terms of combinations tonight. Well, the jab has been looking great. How about jab, jab, right hand? Right. Because eventually you're going to have to put something on your opponent that's going to really make him pause. I believe the jab has been working so well that he drops a big right hand after it. He may be able to finish his fight. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one up? advantage, you might as well use it. Nice job there to find a home for that jab. Looping left hand misses the target. Oh, man, I'm starting to feel bad for the canvas as he lands another takedown there. He landed another takedown, and he's doing it over and over again. What I am a massive fan of is his cardio, the ability to be able to keep this pace over and over as he hits these takedown attempts. Side control now. Well, he's in a compromising spot here, DC. You got to figure out a way to get back to your feet. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter. He's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. All right, great position for him here. He's got the full mount. See if he can get that ground and pound going. Oh, he's got to get it going, but he can't rush. A lot of times, guys get in the full mount, and they rush. They get nervous. They're like, oh, my goodness, I'm winning. The reality is, you're winning, but it can change in a matter of seconds because then they can be gone. He's got to drop his hips, be really heavy at the opponent's base, and then just start to work. Make the opponent give his back so that he can try to get his chokes off or find great ground and pound, but very patient ground and pound from such a dominant position. 
man, as he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two, definitely picking up the pace after round one. So he got the message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. Back and forth we go! Again, going back. Oh! Huge right hand! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here, and he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Oh, single collar tie here. Big ball from Schwartz Lynn. Now he gets back to range. Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, nice job to get back up again. You don't want to hang out on the ground with this guy. And the body work really starting to take its toll here. Obvious redness on that right side. Whoa! Do Ho Choi! Well, let's take a look back at the replay. It ends up a knockout, but this was really a striking clinic from the moment they touched him. I mean, a competitive fight that one guy finally found the shot that ended the fight. But both of these warriors displayed a ton of heart. One guy got the finish, but neither guy should be disappointed in their performance. The official decision is in. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliano has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 32 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by... So there he is, the man of the hour. What a massive knock.